Hello you yeah, absolute legends and welcome back to creating. Today I'd open the video with a bit of trivia. Who invented the light bulb? If you just thought Edison, you're wrong. And if now your mind went straight to Tesla, you're a conspiracy nut and you need help. An incandescent light bulb had been in development for around 80 years before Edison even started his work on it. These are just some of the people who researched and developed their own versions. Some of them even held patents. Edison merely improved the light bulb to the best of his abilities and well later commercialized it. Now, this is the Kobayashi fidget cube by P Kobayashi. Quite possibly one of the most popular 3D printed toys. And this is the Infinity Cube by MJ Dargan. And I tell you why this is the best fidget cube I have ever used after the title card. Before we go any further, I'd say that many different designs of many different fidget cubes are available around various websites on the internet. And I know that even this design with most of its improvements is merely building upon the work done by many others. But this is the one I like best. So here's the comparison of what makes this cube so good. Before that, you know that I try to bring you entertaining and informative content. I do everything from the editing to the graphics and even the music myself. So if you've been enjoying my content, consider supporting me on Patreon. Give me a like for the algorithm and subscribe for more content. For the improvements, I'd start with the least important and the most subjective one. The Infinity Cube looks better. More modern, sleek, tapered edges. I really like the aesthetic of it. But the real improvements are the functional ones. The Infinity Cube requires a lot less bridging and a lot less layer skipping. And by layer skipping, I mean printing filament without something being immediately under it. Like this feature shown here in blue. There is nothing on the layer immediately under it. It's not a bridging component. It's just hanging there in the air. By cleverly redesigning the hinges, the designer has substantially decreased the likelihood of a faded print. The hinges themselves, I really love the fact that unlike many other fidget cubes, the axles for the hinges on this one don't go all the way through, but only a part of the way. And instead of being cylindrical, they are conical at a 45 degree angle. This makes printing easier, makes them stronger, and makes the overall action of the cube much smoother. This is actually the best part about this cube. When I was going to print it, I saw it in the slicer preview and it really struck me as awfully clever. The tapered edges make the Infinity Cube feel more compact. It's the exact same dimensions as the Kobayashi Cube, but it feels so much better to play with, especially for someone with smaller hands like myself. All this ends up in a print that is quicker, less hassle and has a lesser likelihood of failing and smoother action. With the Kobayashi Cube, I always worry for the first 5-10 minutes after printing that I'd snap one of these little axles until they become smooth. Sometimes I actually do snap one of these little axles. As a verdict, the Kobayashi Fidget Cube is a very good fidget cube considering it's 3D printed. The Infinity Cube is a very good fidget cube, period. Now for the scores. For the design, I'd give it 4 out of 5 straight away. It's good. I really like the improvements that went into it. Aesthetics, 3.5, because it's a not a functional tool, right? It's a toy. It could be made to look even better, maybe make an ornamental version or something like that. Printability, solid 4 again. Easy enough to print, although there are a few tips you'd have to keep in mind that I tell you in just a minute. Usability, 4. Hands down the smoothest fidget cube I've ever used. That brings us to an average score of 3.9. And now for the printing tips. I printed everything at a 0.2mm layer height and it looks great. I would not recommend going above that because some of those tricky layer skips. Reducing the layer height may not cause problems, but I haven't tested it myself. Do not resize it. It's meant to be printed in this size and this size alone. But for my most important printing tip, I'd advise you to be cautious of the ambient temperature. For most people, this is not going to be a problem. If your ambient temperature is between 15 to 30 degrees Celsius, you don't need to worry about it. But if, like me, you live in an area that gets cold, you'd need an enclosure. I've been losing a lot of prints lately because even though I have an enclosure, I tend not to use it with my PLA prints. With this, 
you'd have to otherwise sometimes the print would contract and those pesky layer skips won't work very well and that's it for another video if you like my work please support me on patreon or make a purchase on my etsy store of course the links for everything including the fidget cubes are in the description if you liked the video you know what to do if you didn't the other one is fine leave your inputs in the comment section down below i do read them hit subscribe share and until next time just keep building <laughs>